Hey cruisers, welcome to today's live stream. We're so excited to have you here. Today we are switching up the format and for the first 30 minutes of our live stream, we are going to be asking you the cruise questions. If we have time from 1230 to 1 p.m. in the second half, we'll be here to answer your cruise questions. So save them until the end or we may miss them. Today's live stream is brought to you by CruiseLine.com where you can find reviews, tips and photos from real everyday cruisers. And our first question and assignment for you today is to tell us if you would like to share, this is totally optional of course, what your username is over on Shipmate app. Shipmate app is the partner app to the CruiseLine.com website and I have about 2,100 friends that have found me. My username is Cruise tips tv all one word all lowercase no spaces no dashes if you'd like to add me as a friend please go ahead and do so and if you'd like to leave your shipmate name in the live chat do it right now and maybe you'll make some new friends you'd be surprised how easy it is to find and add a friend so thank you all so much for joining us today we are going to ask you all one question at a time so if you could stay focused for us on just that one question answering it and noting it we would love to get to know you all a little bit better and save this information for the future for a number of reasons you will see why we are also doing a giveaway today live in the chat so what the challenge is for you all is that we have got to get this video to 200 likes we have some volunteers who have um, who are going to be keeping an eye on the number of likes on the video today and when we hit 200 we're going to be giving away a set of packing cubes these are from well traveled we will also add them to our Amazon store. They are beautiful. I'm going to just show you a little tiny peek at the um, the design on them. It's kind of hard to do when I, and I need like four hands, but you can see they kind of have like a beautiful sunset-y type design. This is a pack of four and they're absolutely gorgeous. So let us know to all those volunteers night audit and I'm not sure who else is helping out when we get to 200 likes. And then Mr. Cruise Tips TV is going to randomly select a winner. This is an international giveaway so you can be from anywhere in the world and I will personally be shipping them to you when we get to 200 thumbs up today so hit the thumbs up button all right so it looks like a ton of you are noting your shipmate username here in the chat thank you all so very much hi Anna I see that you're new those of you who are new first time uh, live chatters or first time to the cruise tips TV channel welcome we're so happy to have you here we um, basically post two videos a week here on cruise tips TV sometimes that means a live stream every other Saturday um, and other days usually on Tuesdays and or Thursdays we post a video that is usually a vlog or or a studio episode of some sort. So you can always count on seeing us two times a week in your feed. Make sure you are subscribed and that you click that notification bell so that YouTube can tell you when we produce new content for you. While we're at it, do you guys wanna know when the next live stream will be? Let me look at my calendar here and tell you that it will be two weeks from today. Um, it should be Saturday, September 22nd. So hopefully we can we can stick to that. That is the weekend after our 20th wedding anniversary, but I think we're gonna be in town. So let's plan on it, the 22nd noon Pacific time. So it looks like everybody got their Shipmate app in the notes. Now I wanna ask you guys the next question. This is a really simple, easy, super obvious question, but I am curious what your favorite cruise line is. If you've never been on a cruise, tell us what cruise line you're most curious about. So just one word answer on this one, let us know. <laughs> Thank you, Say Hey, for reminding everybody to hit the like button. Very curious to hear how we are doing. That's okay, CBCI. You can download Shipmate anytime you want, or you can um, you can use the CruiseLine.com uh, website as well. It's great for researching. So, all right, let's see what everybody's favorite cruise lines are. I see that Alice was the first to answer with Princess. I see Carnival and Royal Caribbean in the house. Lots more Carnival coming in. Princess all the way, Disney Royal. Oh my gosh, you guys are commenting so fast. It is flying by me, I can barely even see it. Oh, I saw Disney in there, I saw Celebrity. Gary, can you see how fast this is going? Oh my God, this is crazy. P&O, um, let's see, Hall in America. Wow, amazing, Norwegian. You guys are doing an incredible job, Woohoo! Okay, that was awesome. So let's ask you the second question now. My second question is, what is the one thing that you wish you had known as a new cruiser 
or that most concerned you as a new cruiser? So the one thing you wish you'd known as a first, uh, first, uh, excuse me, a first time cruiser, if you've already been on a cruise, or if you're booking a cruise right now, um, that what is the, the thing that you're most concerned about? So what, what's troubling you in the way of planning and things like that? Let's see what everybody has to say. I know, Tasha, the chat is making me dizzy as well. It is, there's just a ton going on. Okay, let's see here. Consuelo says she'd love to go on Disney. I love that you guys are noting the ones that you'd like to go on as well. All right, Steven, love it. Everybody's doing great. 88 miles an hour, Texas the movie. I know, that's so great. So you guys did an incredible job. Um, Cindy's biggest concern is packing light. <laughs> Zachary doesn't remember because he was five when he first cruised. <laughs> I know, Zachary, you never really had a chance, huh? Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, Steve said, making sure you research your cruise line and ship thoroughly before booking. Yeah, that's true. And it's not easy to do necessarily. Okay. Let's see what everyone else is saying. Packing light seems to be a big concern of people. Being on the water, being concerned about seasickness. <laughs> Tom said, one thing, you could order salad and soup at the MDR. It's so true, knowing that you can order more than one thing in the, um, in the dining room at any course is such a good tip and something that a lot of people don't know. Um, Becky said that she would not get seasick. Uh, <laughs> DJ Young said, everything. You didn't research and missed so much. Finding the right plane ticket taking a, a week-long cruise and not a weekend, packing light and doing laundry, tips at the end of the cruise, packing the correct clothing, ship activities, not to pack so much. Wow, this is really good information, you guys. What ID to bring on and off the ship and where to put it on excursion. That's a good one, Brooke. Very good. Motion sickness worries, fear of the mustard drill. I love that, Bonnie. All right, let's see here. Uh, Stephanie said, I wish I had known that excursions aren't necessary to have a great time. That's so true, especially if you're trying to save money. It's not always true. Denise said, bring your, bring your own cups for drinks. Um, Tina Smith said, how to take excursions on your own. Let's see, bringing extra plugs. Gratuities are not included. There's just so many things, you guys. Carrying on your swimsuit. These are excellent. Good job. Okay, let's scroll down to the bottom and see what everybody else is saying. Ah, Kat wasn't aware of the crowds. Lindsay wasn't sure about tripping. Make sure you always look down when going through doors. Yeah, there can be little elevation changes. La Lita Loca says, we didn't know about hurricane season when we first booked. That is a big one, Tony and Jenny. I know, right? Seasickness, tendering, arriving to your cruise port the day before, excursions, gaining weight because of all the eating. <laughs> I know these are all really good. Um, if you needed passports or just birth certificates for kid, kids especially, that's a really good one too. Um, mustard drills ruining the fun since 6,000 BC, Seth. I know, right? It's like you get on the ship and you're going about your business and it's you're having this wonderful day. You order a couple cocktails, you're in the pool, and then all of a sudden, boom, the fun is over. You are out. All right, these are amazing. Okay, uh, Ms. Mary, we are live right now. Hopefully you're able to see us. Extra uh, uh, earplugs, that's a good one. Booking a cabin for the first time. You guys are doing such an incredible job. I know, Dale White said the live chat is going so fast. He feels like he's trying to drink from a fire hose. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Yeah, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, Char, that people were rude. I hopefully, I don't, oh, you're saying you're, you're worried that people will be rude because you have mobility issues. Simple Char, I think there are rude people everywhere. So, I mean, if it's something that you experience on land, you could very well experience it on any vacation or cruise. So message me on Facebook and maybe we could talk about picking the right cruise line where people tend to be a little bit more um, patient or where, you know, that might be less of an issue. I think picking the right um, cruise line is very, very much key in that area. All right, you all did an incredible job of that question. So let's move on to the next question that we have for you. And that is, what is the one top trait of your ideal cruise? So if that question confuses you, I'm gonna say it again, then kind of explain it. What's the one top trait of your ideal cruise? So is it price? Is it location, duration? Is it the cruise line? Is it the destination? Is it getting the cabin you want? What is that one thing that makes the cruise ideal for you. Go. Let us know in the let us know in the chat here. And I'm going to go back and look at some of the other things that people said that they wish they'd known as a new cruiser and kind of read those along. Jazz Vance says always bring a stroller for toddlers. Yeah, that's a really good one. Oh, I will, PJ. I'll check out the picture. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie, for reminding everybody to like it. 
Okay, so answers are starting to coming in to come in about what the one top trait of your ideal cruise is. Let's see what everybody says about that. I'm seeing price for a lot of people, no storms, the cruise ship, um, destination, not having to fly. I'm seeing a lot of people say home port and not having to fly. That's actually a big one for us. Um, price, 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 that's a big one. Destination, cruise line, cabin, the right ship, good customer service, being suitable for teens. Um, let's see, what else? Destination is coming up a lot. The ship itself, itinerary and price, the longer the better. Okay, awesome, you guys. This is so incredibly helpful. Thank you very much for weighing in on what your opinions are on that one. Let's go ahead, oh, I like, I saw one in here that said, is it suitable for teens? That's such a good one because there are cruise lines out there that might be a little too tranquil or you know there might not be enough activities for teens. So that's definitely a concern. Okay, all right, so um, Dave Mello Bulldog, you guys have a difference of opinion in your household. Cruise line for her, location for you. Let's see, Tasha said, I cruise for the destinations. I try to, try to pick somewhere different for each cruise. Ships are nice to look at, but destinations to you are more memorable. That's a good one, that's very well put. Lots of folks are saying, um, destinations. Brixilda said how accommodating they are for special needs. Andrew says no formal night or at least the option not to have formal night, right Andrew? That's a very clever one. I love it. Um, Canada, what did you miss? We are asking you the questions today and if you could give this video a, a big thumbs up when we get to 200 likes we are going to be giving away a set of packing cubes live in the chat. Mr. Cruise Tips TV will be selecting a winner. I am having a hard time being able to monitor it so um, a couple of our subscribers are going to let us know when we get to 200. I don't think we're there yet. I think we're at 153, so we need 47 people to hit the like button so we can give away some packing cubes. All right. Okay, so Sandra said finding an itinerary and cruise line that suits you 100%. Ah, Queen Blizz has a good one. Less upcharges. Gail Peterson says weather. Lots of good ones. Mellow Bulldog, Mike and Cheryl are visiting with family today. They'll watch the replay. <laughs> okay, you guys did a great job. So let's move on to the next question. I'm learning so much about all of you today and this is really interesting. Um, what is, this is a packing related question. Okay, everybody, here we go. Get your keyboards ready. What is the one cruise packing must have that you take with you? So that one thing that you never go on a cruise without. I can never pick just one thing, but try to give me just one. For me, I'd have to say the one thing I always get concerned that I'm going to forget that I really, really like everywhere I go in my life is a sleep mask because I really like to light block when I sleep. It drives me crazy if I have the TV is on or if there's light in the room, I just really want to conk out with total darkness. That's one thing I really like to have. So tell me what you guys think. Oh, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you, are you seeing what's going on in the chat? Mm -hmm. We hit it, 200, you want to pick a winner? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Cruise Tips TV is going to pick a winner and he's going to let me know when he does. Good job on getting us to 200, thank you all so very much. Okay. So let's see what the essential one thing that you all need to take on a cruise is. I'm seeing wrinkle releaser, bathing suit. Bathing suit's a big one. Karen says her husband. Sunscreen, power strip, um, camera, passports, clock, black dress, D Walker. The right shoes, says Alice. Alice, you are clearly a student of Cruise Tips TV. Sunscreen says, say hey. Steven says, my wheelchair charger. That's a good one, Steven, I like it. Lisa says, a USB hub. Ah, Bonnie, a flashlight. Tom Henry says, camera, batteries, charger. Um, Lainey says, camera. Anna says, external battery charger for all devices. Very, very good. Okay, Jody, you're learning a lot. Oh good, I'm so glad. Karen likes her Kindle. Natasha says extension cord. Tanner says earplugs. Benjamin says medicine. Um, let's see what else we have. Ah, um, Steve Roth says toiletries. Yeah, you probably don't want to forget those. Karen says poo-pourri. We've got a lot more people saying USB hub. Autobot Diva says clean underwear. Judy says a book. That's a good one. That's, that's our relaxing cruiser, Judy. Taking your book with you. Good job. Ah, packing cubes, right? Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Joe, thank you so much for the super chat. That was so generous of you and I really appreciate it. Sounds like you found us here over on, I know that you were looking for the link. So welcome and thank you so very much for this super chat. We really appreciate it. My computer just froze on me, everybody. I'm gonna try to get it back, bear with me. Oh yeah, I'm totally frozen up. 
Okay, well that's okay. We'll figure it out, we'll get it back. Let's see. All right, let's hit our next question. What does everybody think? Shall we do that? Let's see what we've got here. Our next question is, what was your favorite cruise port of all time? Your favorite cruise port of all time. I can't name one because I have a different one for Alaska. I have one for the Caribbean. I have a favorite for Mexico. So I can't name the, you know, just one item. While you're all noting that, let's go back and look what some of the one cruise packing must have was. I see walking shoes, Yeti cup, cough drops, um, straws. Yeah, that's true. You may have to take straws now if you want, but you probably have to be careful of disposing of them, right? Um, OTC and prescription meds, the cleaning wipes we recommend, good one. Susie Q says patch for seasickness. Liz says cash, power strip again. Very good. Okay, you guys have so many good ideas. We're gonna let you do all the packing for us. Deborah said conditioner, and Deborah's smart because Deborah knows that on a cruise ship, you may have shampoo in your shower, but you are not going to be given conditioner. Wanda says a selfie stick. Uh, let's see here, travel hangers, cell phone camera to take lots of pics, Tylenol, Advil, extra hangers, uh, another one for the poo-pourri, Mellow Bulldog says a bikini, alarm clock, I love it, and so Cal Seth says his hot tub club shirt, towel clips, Lysol wipes, an iPad with Kindle books, motion sickness medicines, I love it, Jen says a good book, Lisa says selfie stick, cords, proper shoes. You all did an incredible job. So let's move on to the next one and see what everybody's answers were to the favorite port of all time. I'm seeing Monte Carlo, the Greek Isles, Half Moon Key, Catalina Island, Coco Cay. I'm seeing that many times. Castaway Key, Roatan, Cozumel hands down. I like Cozumel too. Ooh, Sandra Sitka is one of my favorite places too. Bermuda, Night Audit could also say Victoria BC. You are a little biased on Victoria, but I love Victoria too. I think the weather in Victoria is, is surprisingly beautiful and a lot of people don't know that, but it's always gorgeous. All right, Curacao, Castaway Key again. All right, Nassau says Natalie. Crystal says Cozumel, Nachi Cacom. Grand came in for Buddy Bear. Um, Joe Mock, <laughs> Joe says he doesn't usually get off the ship. Joe likes staying on the ship in port, so peaceful. Joe, you are a seasoned cruiser. Usually it takes people a while to relax into that into that process, right? Uh, Denise said Quebec. Denise, Quebec is absolutely one of our favorite ports of all time too, and I often forget to mention that port, but um, it's not something that everybody gets to experience, but if you do go on a Canada, New England cruise and you get to go to Quebec, it's incredibly beautiful to visit both areas of the city and just the just where you sit right off of the, the coastline there with a view of that majestic hotel is just so lovely. Bermuda, Ixtapa, Ensenada, Vallarta, Coco Cay, Costa Maya. It looks like Tiffany, you've only been to Cozumel. That's a good port though, Tiffany, good. Um, John said um, Tanya's favorite was Ketchikan, Alaska. I'm seeing a lot of Cozumel. A lot of you like Cozumel. St. Thomas, Hawaii, Labadee, Florence, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Ah, Liz, the Nassau Atlantis Water Park. We had a blast there this last cruise, and I love it too. Aruba, says Wanda. Wanda, I'd love to visit Aruba. Key West, British Virgin Islands, Dominican. Uh, it's, I know, this is really tough, right? Ooh, Jen has a creative one. Akaroa, New Zealand. Tanise says Mahogany Bay. I'd love to go to Mo Bay as well. Cheryl says Valencia, Spain. Ah, Love it. Allie loves Juno. Steven says Singapore. Steven, awesome. Tell us what you did in Singapore, Steven. Um, let's see. Galveston, Texas. Half Moon Key. You've got Roatan again, Aruba again, Ketchikan, Labadee, Bonaire, Grand Turk, Cuba, Haines, Alaska. Now, if you're lucky enough to visit Haines, Alaska, you are in for a treat. Castaway Key. All right. You guys did an incredible job. There's literally, I, and there are probably hundreds of comments here, if not dozens, but I probably won't be able to read all of them. You did an incredible job. Thank you very much, everybody. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you want a little more time to pick the winner? No, I think we can go now, but it's okay. going to take some setup. Okay, it's going. You just let me know when you want me to stop talking. No, I'm 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 ready. But why don't we do this? Number one, why don't you show? Sure. The show the giveaway. Cubes? All right. So this is what we're giving away today. This is a set of four packing cubes while Mr. Cruise Tips TV tries to get the setup on the screen to announce the winner. We have a small, let me see if I can move my keyboard a little so I can show them a little bit bigger. Let's start with the large packing cube. Here's the big one. And here is the medium size. They all have sort of different designs on them. I really should just break this thing open so that I can show you a little bit better. There we go. You, you just popped your mic off, I think. Oh no. 
Did I? I sure did. Sorry, you guys. I popped my mic off. These easy, are the struggles. Easy, easy. Easy, easy. So sorry, sweetheart. Okay, I'll get it back on. Okay, how's that? Did I do a good job, Mr. Cruz TV? Great job. Oh, phew. All right, so here's the little packing cube. So pretty. This is one of my favorite ones. Has that kind of sunset -y look on it. These are not compression packing cubes like the last set of well-traveled cubes that we had. And here is the larger one, but they are really pretty. These are kind of um, what I would consider practical and vanity in the packing cube department. Here's number three, and this is a four-piece set. And here's the little cutie, the one that I'm calling the, the sunset because it looks like a nice, beautiful evening with the moon kind of popping up. So that is what we are indeed giving away today. Um, special thanks to Well Traveled for sending us this newest release because these are brand new to them. And if you were not selected as a winner, we will link to them in the description of the video after this is saved because they're very inexpensive and they're available on Amazon. So if you have a Prime membership, you can get them shipped for free. And I know that they're under $25. I can't remember the exact price, but they are really so beautiful. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the setup that I was talking about is we have to tell people, I think probably in case this goes wrong, okay. that we came up with this idea with literally four minutes left to go live. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a graphic from a previous thing that we used to do, and I'm not sure that it's going to directly refresh. And that, that okay. graphic was the spot on spotlight or on the spot spotlight. And Say Hey was our person for the last one. So if it okay. comes up as Say Hey, it's, I'm sorry, Say Hey, it's not you. And I just have to do a refresh, okay? okay. So let's go ahead. And by the way, we're only obviously only picking people that are in, in the, the chat. chat right now. So that's where the selection was okay. made. And Say Hey, we love you. <laughs> we want to give you a prize. We always want to give you a prize. Are All you right. ready? I'm ready. Here Drum roll. Comes. The winner is... I don't know who the winner is. It's Miss Marie. Miss Marie! Miss Mary, M-A-R-E-E. -E. Mary. Yay, congratulations, Miss Mary. You are the winner of the packing cubes. Thank you guys so much for helping us to get to that point. We thought we would just do something fun. Like Mr. Chris Sips TV said, it was literally 11.56 and he said, I have an idea. Let's give away something fun today in the chat. And we've never actually done this before because we have to use a randomizer and it's very difficult to do that that fast. So. It worked out. So congratulations, Ms. Mary. If you're there, let us know. Ah, oh, very awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, we if we could give packing cubes to everybody, please know that we would, you guys. We, um, we appreciate all of you, and we are going to be doing a ton of giveaways next month, so get ready for a lot more of this because the fun is coming, and this will not be the last giveaway that we do. All right, so everybody did a great job telling us all about their favorite port of all time. Now we have two more questions for you and we're running right on time. So the, the next question that we'd like all of you to answer is, what is the first thing you do when you get on the ship? So what is your, I guess you could call it an embarkation day tradition, but I think that the new cruisers here today, the people who haven't been on a cruise before or maybe have only been on one cruise, would really like to hear what it is that you do um, when you get on the ship, do you go straight to your room and see if it's ready? Do you hit the buffet before the crowds? Do you go get a cocktail? Do you take a picture on the upper decks? Do you do what my son and I do and try to jump in the pool or the hot tub before it gets crowded? Or if you're like Mr. Cruise Tips TV, you go off and try to take pictures of the ship or something like that. All right, so let's see what everybody says. Say hey, go straight to Guy's Burgers. Yes, of course, say hey. If I were going on Carnival, that is the first thing I would do. Julie wipes down her cabin with those norovirus wipes that we have in our shop. Kimberly gets a drink. Let's say, ah, I love this one. Um, okay, so Tom drops off his luggage at the cabin. Krista runs all over the ship. <laughs> It's really, Chris, I have a picture of you in my head running all over the ship. This is so great. Um, these are going so fast I can't even read them, but I'm seeing a lot of people saying cocktails. Um, Chantra eats and tours the ship. Dog, dog catcher and Lily get food. Emily goes to the bar. D looks around. DJ DJ11 explores the ship. Andrew Anchors likes to eat. Ah, L Hop likes to take a nap. I like that one and I admire your honesty. Lots of people go to get um, food and drinks. That's one of the most popular things that I'm seeing people do. Cindy heads to the nearest bar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Steven, what's DOD? Oh, drink of the day. Steven goes and buys the drink of the day. Good one. 
All right, Zachary, I didn't know you were such a cruise nerd. Zachary goes straight to his cabin and unpacks. Honestly, Zachary, if we weren't vloggers, I probably would do that too because I like to have a clean room. But for me, it's like, okay, no, we have to have some fun because you guys are counting on us to have fun, not to go to our rooms and unpack. But I admire that. Okay, let's see. Lots of people saying they go and they eat. Ah, Ginger, you asked about um, Vlogtoberfest and... Yes, let's just say right now, I think we have made the decision that Vlogtoberfest is coming back. It's a little bit overwhelming. It's vlogging every day is hard, but we thought about it and we thought, how could we not do it again? How could we not have Vlogtoberfest? So I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. We have to get organized because we do have another very big project that we're working on right now that's a, a cool new offering for everybody and it's 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 gotta get done and I'm not done with it. So. I, I think I think Vlogtoberfest is coming. You guys are probably getting a little too much too much rambling for me right now. But good question, Ginger. Tasman, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And I have to say, every time you and I interact on social media, I always just love your name. I'm so jealous. I think it's such a beautiful name. So thank you very much for following along with us. And thank you for the super chat today. We really appreciate it. All right. I think I figured out that every time I click on super chat, my computer freezes. So I have to get out of freeze mode here. And Mr. Chris TV, I'm not gonna make you crawl on the floor and come and help me. <laughs> I know how to do, oh, okay, just refresh. Click it, again. click it again, right here, show me where. Right here. Oh, just, oh, thank you. Oh man, okay, sorry about that everybody. All right, Denise said Vlogtoberfest is what got her hooked on CTTV. And everybody's saying, yay, please. Okay, then I'm, I'm glad to hear that you all really enjoyed it. We enjoyed it too, and it's a lot of fun. And it culminates with the last day of October being my birthday every year because I was born on Halloween. So it always makes it kind of fun to sort of have the, the month leading up to that as a as kind of a, a, a vlog fest. So this year I have to share with you guys, I am turning 45. So the big four or five is coming. I'm, I'm not one of those people that doesn't share my age with anyone, but I think that we're gonna have to have some vlogging fun around the 45 theme. And if you guys have any ideas, um, anything you wanna share that we could do, I don't know what it would be because 45 of anything is a lot. So I was trying to think like, what do we do? 45 reasons that we love cruising. I'm like, oh, that might wear us all out. But if you think of anything that would be a fun vlog related 45th celebration, let me know. So yeah, okay, you guys are all excited about it. That's awesome. Aw, oh, thanks Cruising with Wheels. Yeah, Vlogtoberfest was fun. I didn't know Steve, oh, I think I did know that Halloween was your wedding anniversary. That is so cool. <laughs> oh man. All right, so why, um, what's going on that I'm missing in the chat, Mr. Chris Sips TV? I kind of, I tuned out for just a moment because we got all, we all got excited about Vlogtoberfest. Yes, Alice A, it really has been a year since we did that again, and I can't believe that. It's crazy. Anything I missed, honey? No? Okay. All right, so um, I want to go back and see what the rest of your traditions were, everybody. Autobot goes to the bar and gets a Sprite so you don't get seasick. Oh, that's a really good idea, kind of get that, that carbonation in there. Deborah goes to the room, too. A lot of people drop off their luggage and explore. Very good ones. Okay. All right, so our last question today before we switch over to any questions that you may have for us would be... Um, what cruise cocktail or cruise food, so either one, it could be cocktail, drink, food, was so good on your last cruise that you tried to recreate it at home? Could be food, could be drinks. Mine is actually a cocktail, it's not my last cruise, but when we were on an Alaska cruise, I wanna say it was either Grand or Golden Princess to Alaska a few years ago, I got hooked on this drink on Princess Cruises called the Sam's Sidekick? Was that what it was called, Mr. Cruise Tips TV? Was it Sam's Sidekick? I think it was, huh? And it was that martini that I love that has, um, it's a gin martini made with grapefruit juice, blackberry brandy, a twist of lime, and gin. And it is my favorite drink. So I do remake it. Sometimes now I don't really remake it with all the fancy ingredients. So I will skip the blackberry brandy and even the lime and just go straight for the gin and the grapefruit. But boy, is it good. And I do not like sweet things. As you all know, if you've been hanging out here for a while, you know I don't like sweet drinks very much. 
And so it really, really works for me. So that was my one awesome drink that was so good that I had to recreate it at home. Everybody has some good ones coming in here. Oh my gosh, Melissa said Carnival's Bushwhacker. Brandy says Salmon. George says Key Lime Martini. Oh, Key Lime Pie Martini on Princess. That sounds so good. Um, yeah, Zachary, that sounds like a really good filet mignon, grasshopper martini, truffle fries. All of those sound good. Um, Steve said guac and salsa that you had in Costa Maya. Becky says kiss on the lips. You found the recipe. Ooh, Chris Lightsey, did you find the guy's burger donkey sauce recipe? Vicky said creme brulee. Yum, Julie, a pumpkin martini. We must get that recipe, Julie. You and me, girl, let's figure that out before fall comes. I'm seeing more than one people say they love the kiss on the lips. Ooh, Linda said Laba Doozy. Yes, I've heard that those are really, really good. Oh, that's not stupid at all, Alice, or whoever said that. Who said their, their idea was stupid? That's not idea, no, Kimberly. That's so great. The watermelon feta cheese appetizer on Princess, that's simple and wonderful. I think that's great. Oh, Chantra, the guacamole at Sabor on Freedom of the Seas. Who said a double old fashion? <laughs> we got the mango tango, the Miami Vice, the chocolate melting cake. James, you went with beer, huh? <laughs> I like it. Um, Lego said mango frozen smoothie. Love it. Wow, you guys are, you guys are really um, coming up with some good 45 ideas here. These are fun. I'm, I'm actually seeing them through the chat. Oh, John. You replicated afternoon tea with sandwiches, cucumber and Havarti cheese sandwiches, scones. Yum. I approve. L Hop said the muesli from Princess. Yum. PJ said I can get the recipe. Okay, I'm gonna find that. That sounds so good. Ooh, Mary Kate. Yep, jerk chicken, ginger cake. Mm-mm-mm, yum. Lindsay, tell me more about this cinnamon toast crunch shot. That sounds crazy. That sounds so good. Delicious. Wow, yeah, you're gonna love um, Katie's Many Adventures. You're gonna love the Alchemy Bar, it's great. I'm gonna scroll up a little because I know that I missed some. I see Mudslide, the Holland America Purple Dragon from Cruising with Wheels, Escargot and Creme Brulee. Oh, yum, these all sound so good. I love that you guys said that you're recreating the afternoon tea. I'm seeing another person here who said that, and I, tea is one of my favorite things about Cruising with Princess anyway, too. All right, Ann Smith said the pizza, yum, delish. So a lot of you were talking about the Miami Vice. There must be some secret there. April said a double old fashioned. Oh, these are so clever. I look forward to um, sitting back and reading all of this a little bit later when I can actually um, read everything. It gets a little crazy. So let's go ahead and get to some questions now. I'm seeing a few questions that I missed. The first one is from Cruising with Wheels. Hi guys. It says, when you were on the Bliss, did you go to Los Lobos? You're trying to replicate everything you had there. Yes. I only had two days on the Bliss. So it was a really, really short cruise, but I did go to Los Lobos and it was good. The guacamole was the best part. Being from California, I would say the Mexican food was good but I didn't have anything that was like a crazy amazing home run where I felt like replicating it, but I do remember that the, um, the empanadas were very, very delicious. And you know what I loved was the cocktails. I had some pineapple concoction at Los Lobos that I really, really liked, and their cocktails were delicious, but the guac, yes, the guac is a home run, and I would say that is amazing. So go ahead and bring on the questions, folks. We are ready. Um, Shanna wants to know if anybody know anybody knows if there's afternoon tea on Royal Caribbean ships. If and Shanna, if we don't end up answering that today, go check out the message boards over on Royal Caribbean blog. And I am going to start getting more questions here. Sorry, I didn't have the answer. The Cake is real. Wants to know what cruise line has the best food. Food is super, super, super. Oh, so individual. So I'm gonna let other people weigh in. What cruise line do you all think has the best food and why? I'm gonna ask you that question. Let's just make this a big topic right now because I think that we have enough opinions in the house about cruise food to help Cake is Real with that question. All right, next question I am seeing coming in today is from Canada. Your question is about your Alaska honeymoon. How can you get the best deal? Purchasing your trip with a travel agency or just online directly? It really doesn't matter. Price-wise, you're gonna pay the same however you book Canada. What you need to focus on is looking at the dates. If you book early season in Alaska or late season, you can save the most money and you can have a spectacular time in early to late May 
uh, in Alaska. It's our favorite time to cruise there. You could save hundreds if not thousands of dollars from booking at that time. Otherwise, just do some competitive shopping and I absolutely do recommend that you use a travel agent. So definitely do that. Okay, I'm looking for the next question here. They're coming in fast, but I'm gonna scroll up for a little bit. I'm hearing that there's no afternoon tea on Royal Caribbean, by the way. Okay, Alex Newsom Vlogs. Flying back from a cruise on the MSC Seaside and it was fun and you're going again next month. What was the best spot on Seaside? We made a video about kind of our top five favorite spots on Seaside because I can't pick just one, but I think I remember them all and it was the Champagne Bar area was one of my favorites. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, what else did I like? I liked the... Um, the Bridge um, of Size. The, what was that? The Bridge of Size. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The chocolate shop. Thank you for helping me remember Infinity that. Infinity Bridge. Infinity Bridge. That was beautiful. And just all the outdoor space on MSC Seaside is really spectacular. We also made a video about our son's favorite spots on the ship. So from a kid's perspective, his top seven video, we just released that one, I believe, last Tuesday. And he liked everything from the water slides to the bunk bed. So um, there were a ton of things. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Looking for the next question. Do you want to tell Emily Green what you think about Nachi Kakom? Sure. Cozumel? Emily, I think Nachi Kakom is the gold standard of beach clubs in Cozumel. I really love it. We also experienced Mr. Sancho's on our last cruise, and I liked it a lot, but for a different reason. Um, I liked Mr. Sancho's because it was fun for our family, and my son and my husband and I had a blast at the water park, but I can tell you that Nachi is way more tranquil and way less crowded, and the food's a little bit better, in my opinion, at Nachi Cocon, but Mr. Sancho's was really, really fun. Um, Texas the movie said thoughts on using the motion sickness patch behind the ear if it works for you do it you may also want to consider non-medicinal um, treatments like the band C bands or better yet the relief band 2.0 which is non-medicinal and acts with your p6 point um, we worked with relief band to create a video and talk a lot more about the project the, the product you might want to check that out if you're concerned about the medicinal side of using the patch it's kind of up to you I do hear that the patches are effective but some of them have side effects are so we gonna be, are we gonna be doing a giveaway with yes some of those? we are gonna yeah, be doing a giveaway to look forward to. and that's a hundred and seventy nine dollar giveaway the relief band is very very um, it's so high tech. It's too. so high tech and incredible. Don't you think, Mr. Chris Tips TV? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hey, really. I have a question from Emily Brown. Sure. Going on her honeymoon at the end of March on Harmony of the Seas. This is kind of a general question for everyone. Anyone have any good ideas for um, decorations or a surprise for her husband? Love that. Kind of depends on what your husband likes. A lot of times when we talk about honeymoons here on the channel, we talk about booking a specialty restaurant like the steakhouse to go to together, maybe couples massages or a special excursion that's private. Um, but let's let everybody else weigh in on that. Um, Char wants to know what's the number one tip. I think what you mean is, Char, the number one tip for a first time cruiser would be probably to plan but not over plan. It's really hard for me to give you just one, but try to keep calm and get organized, make lists, and use our community here in our videos to help you plan. Um, but what we don't like to see is people getting so worked up that they make themselves sick before the first cruise, and it happens all the time. It's a real thing to get so anxious that you're gonna forget things. Get your passport early and try not to worry, okay? Um, DKDJ11, what is better, a five-day cruise or a seven-day cruise? If you can afford the time off work and afford the cruise, go with seven-day. Wouldn't you agree, honey? Yeah, I think so too. Okay. I'm going slowly through the questions here so I don't miss them. I'm going from the top to the bottom. So if you have answered your question, I'm going to start at the top and try to get down to the bottom if we have time. We have 20 minutes so we can do a lot. Becky is um, wanting Christmas gifts. Christmas gifts idea, get gift ideas for her 11-year-old grandson. Becky, I don't know what your grandson's um, interests are, but Obviously, if you want to focus on packing smaller items for him, if he's into video games or, um, or still into things like Legos, I would recommend getting a combination of smaller gifts and gift cards. So maybe get him a video game and then like a gift card to Target or something like that because you don't want to be packing too much stuff with you. Tell me a little more about his interests, Becky, or DM me on... Um, on Facebook and I'll try to help you, but I do want to tell you, Becky, that one of the episodes we're considering doing for Vlogtober 
is um, the best gift ideas for every single category of human. So gifts for her, gifts for him, gifts for kids, gifts for teens. And based on the fact that you're asking me that question, I think we're gonna go for it and do that. So let's take a look. <laughs> Mr. Christmas TV, I just saw your answer to the favorite places on Seaside. That was really cute. I love it. Okay, looking for more questions. I know we have them. Please bear with me, everybody. Oh boy, what happens sometimes with the chat is it pushes me all the way down to the bottom and I miss the ones that are up top. So um, I know that there's a little bit of silence while I scroll and I appreciate all of you being so patient with me. Um, Jay Lee said, what are good apps for excursions? You're going to Cuba and the ship excursions are too expensive. Okay, Jay Lee, there's a lot of different options for you. I don't think you can see my phone right now, but I think you should start with Shipmate app. So you open up the Shipmate app to go to excursions and then you click on explore down at the bottom and then you click on excursions and then you pick your destination. Let's see if Cuba comes up under Caribbean. I'm just gonna type in Cuba and see if you can find some options there. Okay, it's not coming up under Caribbean so let's see if it's got its own, if it's its own port. Um, I can't see it right now but my connection's kinda slow. So you could do that you could do TripAdvisor is also a good option for you for researching. And here's another out of the box idea that I wanna to present to you for researching excursions. This is a newer idea. If you're not able to find what you're looking for on cruiseline.com, I think you should go to Instagram and I think you should start following some hashtags for Cuba. Um, follow hashtags for whatever ports you're visiting. I'm not sure if you're going on just a one night and you're just going to Havana, but start following the hashtag Havana or um, Havana activities and things like that. Start really looking at pictures of what people do and you should be able to get a better idea for what is available to you in Cuba. Um, but I like to start with Shipmate app and do my research there and you can book it right in the app as well. You can also Google it. Google, you know, Cuba excursions for cruisers and see what kind of pops up. It's definitely okay to book outside the cruise line there. Yes, Natty, there are weekend getaway cruises two to four days. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, Heather said you're cruising kid-free and parents are coming down to be with the kids. Aside from letting the school know, is there anything else you should do? Medical release, POA, anything? Yes, definitely, Heather, I have a few suggestions for you. Um, you do need to leave a signed medical release note with your um, parents that authorizes any type of care. That's a really excellent idea. Um, another thing I would say, Heather, regarding the cruise itself would be to have, it, what you might wanna do is have planned um, dates and times that you're going to check in with them and how you're going to do that. Because in the event, Heather, that you decide to put your phone in airplane mode and you don't have cell service the whole time, you can still use, um, you can still be in airplane mode and maybe email them or have a, um, get an internet plan and plan a time and a date that you're going to check in with them. Um, you might even be able to get Wi-Fi in port and you might wanna make arrangements just to say, hey, look, we're gonna email you. We're gonna email you on this date. If you could do me a favor and reply within a few hours so I know the kids are okay, that's a really good way of doing it because a lot of people keep their phone in airplane mode for an entire cruise and that means your phone won't ring if something happens and they need to reach you. So I'm thinking of kind of on the cruise, but in terms of how to prep your, your parents, I think the main thing would be the medical release form, if that's even still a thing. But I think these days, most people, if you're in the United States, they won't deny the kids care. Um, so yeah, okay. Mr. Chris Tips TV, have you, have you grabbed a few questions that you want me to try to answer? I feel like I can't keep up with them. And I do have okay. a bunch, and it is very busy, and you're okay. doing a great job. Well, okay. Laura wants to know, um, actually, let me start over. Laura is going on the Bliss in 22 days and okay. wants to know if they offer day passes for the thermal spa. Ooh, that is one thing I didn't get to check on when I was on Bliss. Does anybody know if they well, have Well, Cruising with Wheels jumped in and said that they do, but oh. they, they go really fast. They go fast, yeah. really? Okay, thank you, Kevin and Frank, for answering that question for us, though. Okay, so there you go. How early can you board the ship, Joe? It, in San Juan, Puerto Rico, I'm not 100% sure, but normally I like to get to the port around 11 a.m., um, that's too early to get on the ship, but if they start boarding at 11.30, that's my preference. So does anybody else know? 
What time you can get on the ship in San Juan, Puerto Rico, please? All right, I'm ready for the next one, Mr. Bruce Stevie. Lindsay is going to Hawaii on Princess in 2020 and would like to know if we have any suggestions. Ooh, Hawaii. Oh, um, I do have a suggestion for you. On um, My understanding is that there is some kind of a shore excursion package that you can buy in Hawaii that gives you really good discounts in all the ports. Go to Cruise Radio, to the podcasts, and search for his interview with Cruise Fever when he interviewed him about his experience on Pride of America. I want to say it's over a year old. He tells you the name of the excursion pass that he bought. And if that doesn't work, just try the Cruise Radio website for tips on cruising to Hawaii. And I think you're going to find that there's an excursion pass that will save you massive money there. Shelly is asking me a question about Seaside that I can see right here. I'm going to answer it. Shelly, about the pools that are over six feet. I understand a lot of people have asked me this question. The problem is we didn't get into any of the pools on the ship. So I personally can't comment on it. I do understand that they don't have shallow ends and I can see how that would be frustrating because you either have to hang onto the side or, or tread water. I get it, but I didn't go in any of the pools except for the water slides and the, I hung out near the kids pool with my son and I got in one hot tub, but we were on such a port intensive itinerary. We had four port days out of six days. So I just didn't have any time, but, um, yeah, I could see how that would be a bummer, but people were in the pools and loving yeah, it. Yeah, we, we saw people hanging onto the edge with their drinks, and it, yeah. was, it was actually pretty funny. You can watch from the, from the rear elevator, you can watch people hanging onto the back end. They're all surrounding the outside. Yeah, yeah, they seem to be fine. I didn't hear anybody complaining about it, but it's something, it's a known, it's a known situation. It's not new, obviously, because the ship was built that way. Thank you, Recon 1A, for the super chat. You're a sweetheart. We appreciate it. Okay. More questions. Denise, oh, I so sorry. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to share that SoCal Seth gave a recommendation on Oahu, and I really want to make sure that they know that if you're going to Oahu, he recommends the Pearl Harbor tour. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Christopher. I'm so sorry. That's fine. Denise says, is staying in an interior room with portholes a good alternative to an ocean view? It is a good alternative, and please go to Facebook and watch our exclusive video all about inside cabins that we posted this week. We talk about the benefits of booking an inside cabin, and we also tell you why you might or might not want to. The bottom line is that if you, if the price is what you can afford, then go with the inside. If you can afford a balcony or an outside and you want a little extra space, go for it. But sometimes we can't afford to go in anything higher than an inside. And the example we give in that video is, I'm sorry, when it's thousands of dollars more to be in a balcony, I'm not gonna do it. If it's hundreds more, I might do it. So watch that video. Yeah. Okay, Ms. Chris, I'm ready for another one. All right, Anna has gone on three cruises, mm -hmm. and, but never sure if they're tipping enough. What is the best way to figure out the oh. right and fair amount? Isn't that hard, Anna? I know it's so tough. Most of the time on a cruise, your tips are covered. So you are tipping your room st steward automatically. You are tipping your um, dining staff automatically. And when you buy a drink, the gratuity is already added. There are times though, when it is a little bit unclear. Here's a few examples of times when you should tip. One, you should tip the porter that takes your bags at the curb when you get to the ship. One to two dollars per bag at least for the porter. Number two, if you get a spa treatment, gratuity may not be covered. Ask the front desk before you get your treatment. Number three, if you dine in a specialty restaurant, ask the staff if gratuity is included. You may need to add an extra gratuity cash or sale and sign card, whatever card. I'm trying to think of other instances. There are people who give cash, extra cash to bartenders, room stewards, dining staff, and there are people who do not give any extra cash to anyone. It is very personal, it is up to you, but cruises are designed so that you don't have to shell out tips everywhere on the ship. Totally different story in port, we could do a whole episode on that, but that's my kind of basic answer. We have something that we started doing a while back ago. I don't know if you mentioned that or not, but a lot mm -hmm. of times we will give a $20 tip to our room steward right off the bat. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. You want me to tell them why? Yes, I do. <laughs> Um, I, again, we don't do this every time, but on longer cruises, a lot of times we will leave a note and a 20 on the bed for our room store day one for a little bit of extra service. We will say, we know how hard you work, really appreciate you taking care of us this week, and here's a little something extra just to say thank you. I find that when I want my mini bar fridge emptied, when I want extra towels, when I need ice two or three times a day, I do not feel guilty asking them. And they do an incredible job and you might get just a little extra smile and maybe even a hug at the end of the cruise. And I really think it's a good idea. It's a very intimate relationship sometimes with your, um, with your room steward and your dining staff. They're really taking care of you and your family, your companions. and. I just so appreciate the level of service that we get that I think an extra 10 or $20 bill is reasonable. I don't give them an extra $100. I can't afford to do that all the time, but a little something can be really nice. There's even been times when we brought them a little something from shore, chocolate, chips, whatever. I prefer to give them cash because who knows what they like, but I think it can be a nice thing. Yes, Joe, you're right. 10 to 20 for the entire cruise, not per day. Thank you so very much. Okay. Oh, I know, Joe, I like hugs too, trust me, so true. Okay, Becky, how, yes, there are holds that are put on cards um, on cruises generally, but nothing different from if you're staying at a hotel, et cetera. Okay, we don't usually give gifts to our cabin store, just a little cash. I think it's nice. Linda, that's very kind to give them $5 every day. That's very generous, and I'm sure that they love you for it. And I'm sure that you're helping them to buy phone cards to call home. I'm sure that when they go to Walmart in port, they're getting some snacks because of you. So it's appreciated, I'm sure. Okay. I know we have a lot of questions, you guys. Go ahead, Mr. Christopher TV. I'm ready. All right, Michelle says, what excursions did you guys do in Alaska? We're going in 2020. So many excursions. I have videos about all of them. Please go to our um, playlist for our Alaska cruises and you'll see all of them. In Juneau, we did an amazing excursion that offered three different things. In Skagway, we saw bears. In, um, excuse me, in, in Ketchikan, we saw bears. And in Skagway, we did the White Pass Rail. But go watch the videos. You'll love them. You'll see everything we did and you'll have a blast. And if you can't find them, just um, message me on Facebook and I'll get them to you. Go ahead. Where did you get your blouse? It's so pretty. Do you like my blouse? I got it at Target. I just got it at Target. They still have it. It was 20 bucks. Not bad, huh? Thanks, though. That's from I Michelle. I like it, too. Thanks, Michelle. Becky Hopper says, have you ever booked excursions on Shipmate? I haven't yet. Um, when we were doing, the only opportunity that I had to do it was in the Caribbean, and we had things that we'd already planned ourselves, so we hadn't, but I, I used it as a research tool, almost exclusively. I looked at prices, um, I considered doing it for Cozumel, but then we just went to Mr. Sancho's. There's a lot, there's a lot to choose from. You're gonna have a lot of options. Except for Cuba, I couldn't find Cuba, but maybe I'm missing, I think I'm searching wrong on Cuba, okay. Emily is confused about tipping the waiters. Mm -hmm at the end of the cruise yeah, and wants to know the staff knows who prepaid the gratuities. No, I don't know if they know. I don't know if there's a huge difference between prepaying the gratuities before your cruise and them being automatically debited on board, but you don't have to tip extra Emily um, if you don't want to, but sometimes they'll give you an envelope. The staff can give you an envelope and you can do that, but it's not required. Okay, I'm ready for the next one, Mr. Cruz. Doing good? Okay, I'm gonna look back for older questions because I know that I've missed some. Okay, um, oh, Jennifer wants to know what our tips are for freestyle cruising with NCL. Jennifer, my tips for um, freestyle cruising with NCL will be to make reservations in advance on the website if you are able to for shows and dining. I also suggest that you purchase a dining package if it is available to you. So if you, have, if you haven't already taken the perk or the, um, the freestyle cruising perk where you get a certain number of dining, uh, packages. I highly recommend the specialty restaurants on Norwegian cruises. They're very, very good. I always enjoy the Brazilian steakhouse. I like the teppanyaki restaurants, and I always like the regular steakhouse. My husband and I really like the Brazilian steakhouse, though, for a funny reason, and that's the salad bar, which we talk about all the time. Do you remember that, Mr. Christopher's TV? So good. Best salad bar ever. Oh my gosh. So, yeah. Um, hope that helps you. 
Alice in Cabo, would you go to a resort if you only had time from 8 to noon? Nope, I sure wouldn't. That is such a short port call. Take a water taxi to Medano Beach. We have a tutorial video on how to get there. Just look back a few months and you'll see um, the title of it is something called How to Get to Medano Beach, but the thumbnail says Best Deal of Her Life. You'll see it. It's a fun one. Okay. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up very soon here. We have five more minutes. It's a good time to go ahead and leave your questions in the comments right now and I will try to get to them. Steve, you're right, Moderno's not always available. Um, okay, so Dave Mellow Bulldog, you're looking for a cruise from LA, from San Francisco to LA. I don't know if they do just that, but I know that the Cal there are California coastal cruises that you wanna look for that would hit those two ports. Jazz MSC is extremely kid-friendly. Um, one of the more kid-friendly lines I've ever sailed on, and I do recommend them for families. SoCal Seth, I do win friends with salad. If I had to pick a food group to survive on, it would be vegetables. I love vegetables. I can't live without them. I can't have a meal without a vegetable. Even my breakfast has vegetables in it, so you're wrong. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, what do you mean about the Norwegian sail way, Sean? Um, explain to me what you mean about that. Um, okay, more questions here. Uh, Tia, what was the name of the resort we visited in Grand Cayman and how much was it? We didn't visit a resort in Grand Cayman. We went to, oh uh, gosh, what was the name of it? The Royal Palms. And I honestly didn't care for it very much. The beach was too small and everything was an upcharge. I would suggest that you try to go to a larger beach that doesn't cost as much. Okay. Um, lots of questions coming in. Go ahead, Mr. Christopher. So I'll take it. All right. Okay. I've got one from Texas, the movie. Okay. I, I love that by the way. That's cute, huh? Yeah, it's very cool. Are booking or is booking an excursion at port in Mexico safe or should it be done through the cruise? You know, it depends on where you are in Mexico and you have to really feel out whether the excursion provider, when you walk off, kind of use your best judgment with the excursion provider. It should be safe if you're not going into the jungle for four hours with a stranger. So if you're staying close by, it should be okay. Thank you for the super chat, Emily Brown, that, then the kind words. Very, very sweet, thank you, Emily. Okay, I'm ready, Mr. Christopher, do you, got, you have more? Oh, Linda wants to know what my opinion about the Wi-Fi package on MSC Seaside was. I had the six gig package, and I liked it. I, um, if I were to do it again, I would see if there was an unlimited package available, and I'd go with the unlimited. But bandwidth was great, um, speeds were fine, um, but I kind of prefer, unlimited packages, it just works better for me than having to watch the clock. And there's a lot of cruise lines where you, you have to do that. I know when I sail with Princess, because we have, we're platinum on Princess, I get a certain amount of minutes and I just don't like having to watch the minutes. I prefer unlimited packages. So if you're going on MSC and they have an unlimited, please go with that. Okay. Mr. Chris, do you have any more for me? I do have a couple. Consuelo okay. uh, is planning to go to the Mexican Riviera in uh, 2019 mm -hmm. and wants to know if the weather is going to be the same as California at that time. It should, no. If you're going to the Mexican Riviera down in beyond Baja, beyond Cabo, the weather is going to be much more warm and tropical. But during the sea days, if you're going from Los Angeles, you will have California-like weather on the first two days and the last two days. So the sea days going and coming plan for them to be cool. Okay. Any more, Mr. Cruz Subsidy? Yes, Adam okay. Lee is going to St. Thomas on the Bliss in December and Ooh. planning to rent a Jeep and just realized they drive on, they drive on the wrong oh. side. What is wrong with them? <laughs> they drive on the wrong side. And wants to know if there's anything um, they can do to prepare for that. Um, don't drink alcohol and drive. That's good please. advice. We've done it before and it's it's not that big of a deal. You kind of get used to it. For Just, you? I wouldn't do it. Yeah, it wasn't a big deal for me. Really? Yeah. Okay, this guy over here did it in England with roundabouts. It was so scary, but he was a boss. He just got his head around it. What you can do to prepare, you could potentially try to look at um, I would say like tutorial videos on driving on the wrong side of the road. I also wonder if you drive on the other side of the car. 
Oh my gosh, Melissa and Bonnie, thank you so much, you guys, for the beautiful super chats and the early anniversary presents. We got a lot going on this next few months. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. I got my shirt at Target. <laughs> this has been a fun live stream, everybody. I really appreciate all of you coming. Um, Carrie, I don't know if Maho Beach is worth the hype. I would say, I'd, I mean, I don't know if I would do it. It's also a little bit dangerous. I don't, I just don't know if I would expose my son to the jet pressure. I, I don't know. I think I'd probably try to kind of go beyond it. Laura, I'm so glad that you liked the Hotel Maya video. We really love that property and it's fun. If you're sailing on Carnival out of Long Beach, it is so nice to stay there. You feel like you're at a little resort. So thank you for that. Uh, Oh my gosh, you guys are so funny. All right, so as usual, I am quite sure that I have missed some questions today, but I want to make sure that we get them. I want to tell you one more time that it is easier, please forgive me for this, but it is easier for me to answer your questions if you message me on Facebook. So on our follow Facebook, Cruise Tips TV, and I am in those messages all the time. You can leave your comment here after the replay saves, but it is so much harder for me to approve the comments and navigate through them to find the questions I need to answer. So please know that that is my preferred way of answering questions these days, just because of time management, my day job, my life. I have to kind of squeeze it in in the morning, lunch, and night, you know? So help me out and ask your questions there if you can. Um, Henry, you wanted to know when you can find out if we're live. Henry, we post, uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because you will get a notification. Also, um, make sure that you turn on the notification bell and follow us on some form of social media. Instagram and Facebook are the ones where we post the most. We do alert everybody, but we will be live two Saturdays from now, which I believe is the 21st at noon again. All right, everybody. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. We've just gone over the one hour mark. Really appreciate you. And thank you so much for answering our questions. Um, Ms. Mary, I need to get your contact information. So if you could please email me at sherry, S-H-E-R-I, at cruisetipstv.com. I will get your address and I will get these sent out to you right away. Thank you all so much for watching. We really appreciate all the thumbs ups. If you have any further questions, message me on Facebook. And until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Thank you. Cruise around the week. <laughs>